I'm Dr. Frida, and today we're going to chat about congestive heart failure. Do you or a loved one suffer from shortness of breath, or do you get swelling in your legs, your feet, your ankles? And how about when you sleep? Do you find that you have to prop yourself up on a bunch of pillows at night in order to breathe well while you sleep? Or do you sometimes have to literally sleep sitting up in a chair in order to breathe well? If so, you might have congestive heart failure. Let's talk about it. I'm Dr. Frida. I'm a medical doctor who has been triple board certified and today we are going to talk about congestive heart failure. We'll discuss the definition, the types of congestive heart failure. We'll talk about the causes as well as the warning signs and symptoms, the diagnosis and the treatment. So here we go. What is congestive heart failure? Congestive heart failure is a condition when the heart does not pump well enough in order to move blood throughout the body the way that it should. And you can get congestive heart failure in one of two ways. Either the heart does not pump strongly enough to empty properly during the squeezing or the contraction part of the heartbeat, the systole, or the heart does not relax well enough in order to fill properly with blood during the relaxation part of the heartbeat, diastole. Either way, if you have congestive heart failure, you get a backup of blood and fluid. You get congestion in the lungs and other parts of the body. So now let's talk about the two types of congestive heart failure and the causes of those types of heart failure. But first, let's just talk about in general how the heart works. How does this pump work? Well, the heart works in two phases. It works in phase one by contracting and squeezing blood and moving it forward. This is the systolic phase. And then phase two is the relaxation phase when the heart relaxes and fills with blood. This is the diastolic phase. So the two types of heart failure are systolic heart failure and diastolic heart failure. So let's first talk about systolic heart failure. Systolic heart failure, also called congestive heart failure with reduced ejection fraction occurs when there is a failure of the heart to move enough blood forward during the contraction or the squeezing phase of the heart. So what is the ejection fraction, this reduced ejection fraction? Well, ejection fraction is the amount or the proportion of blood that is squeezed out with each contraction. What does that mean? Let me give you an example. If in a heart chamber you have 100 milliliters of blood when the heart is relaxed, and then after it squeezes, after systole, you move out 65 milliliters of blood, then you have moved out 65 of the 100 milliliters of blood. You've moved out 65%. You've ejected 65%, so your ejection fraction is 65%. And this is considered normal in most cases. 50 to 70% ejection fraction is what we consider normal, but be sure to consult your physician and your heart doctor to find out which ejection fraction is a goal for you. In a case of congestive heart failure with a reduced ejection fraction, then instead of moving out that adequate amount or percentage of blood with contraction, you will have a depressed amount of blood. So in a case where you have 100 milliliters of blood in a chamber to start, you may only move out 35 milliliters and your ejection fraction would be 35%. This is a reduced ejection fraction and you may have systolic heart failure or congestive heart failure with a reduced ejection fraction. So what is the significance of having a reduced ejection fraction? Well, if you are not moving blood forward to the body the way that you're supposed to with the heart, well, then you get a backup, a backup of fluid in the lungs, and it can back up in the rest of your body. You can get congestion in the lungs, congestion in the liver, congestion in the spleen. You can activate the renin angiotensin system in the kidneys and get fluid retention. You can get swelling of the legs. All kinds of issues can happen with systolic heart failure. So what are some of the causes of systolic heart failure in particular? Ischemic heart disease is the most common cause of systolic heart failure or heart failure with a reduced ejection fraction. So ischemia of the heart occurs if the heart arteries, the coronary arteries, have narrowing, usually due to plaques or atheromas that block the blood flow or limit the blood flow to the heart. 
if you have a narrowing or decreased blood flow to the heart, then the heart muscle is not getting the adequate blood supply, the adequate oxygen. What happens? You can develop weak heart muscle. And if you have a weak heart muscle, then it is not likely to pump strongly enough. It's not likely to squeeze strongly enough. And so this is how ischemic heart disease can lead to systolic heart failure. To learn more about plaques and atheromas, make sure you watch my video on high cholesterol after you finish watching this video. Another cause of systolic heart failure is an outright heart attack or myocardial infarction. If these coronary arteries become completely blocked and you get areas of the heart that have no blood flow, then that heart muscle will die and you'll get scar tissue. If you have scar tissue and you no longer have functioning heart muscle, then certainly you will have a decreased ability of the heart muscle to contract. And so heart attacks can definitely be a cause of systolic heart failure as well. And then there is hypertension, high blood pressure. If you have long-standing high blood pressure, then you could certainly be at risk for congestive heart failure with a reduced ejection fraction for that reason. How does this happen? If you have an elevated blood pressure, then the heart is forced to try to pump against this very high pressure. So what does it do? It tries to bulk up and you get a hypertrophy or an increase in size of the muscle of the heart. Well, in this case, a big muscle is not good. So when you get ventricular hypertrophy or this big muscle in the heart, that's not a good thing. It can lead to a reduced ejection fraction and here's how. When you get this big heart muscle, it actually demands more oxygen. And so you have the same heart arteries, the same coronary arteries feeding the heart muscle, but now you have this big muscle that has a greater demand for oxygen, but it's not getting enough oxygen. So that can make the heart not pump as well. On top of that, when you get this hypertrophied heart muscle due to high blood pressure, these big muscles in the heart can actually squeeze against the heart arteries, causing them to narrow and have a poor blood flow. So now you have this big muscle, you have a high oxygen demand, but you have less oxygen, less blood going to the heart. So what happens? You get a decreased ability of the heart to pump well. You get a reduced ejection fraction caused by longstanding hypertension. Another cause for systolic heart failure or heart failure with reduced ejection fraction can be a dilated cardiomyopathy. And this is when the walls of the heart or the heart muscle become stretched out and thin. And it can happen for a variety of reasons. You can get dilated cardiomyopathy associated with excessive alcohol use or alcohol abuse. You can also get a dilated cardiomyopathy as a result of certain toxic medications or certain chemotherapies can cause dilated cardiomyopathy. Even certain infections, certain viral infections can lead to dilated cardiomyopathy. So these are some of the causes of systolic heart failure. Now let's talk about diastolic heart failure or heart failure with a preserved ejection fraction. So diastolic heart failure or heart failure with a preserved ejection fraction occurs when the heart does not relax well enough in order to fill properly with blood. And yes, you still get a congestion, it's still congestive heart failure. Now, even though in this diastolic heart failure, you have a preserved ejection fraction, that doesn't necessarily mean that you are pumping out an adequate amount of blood. Let me explain. So in that example I gave earlier of a person with systolic heart failure or heart failure with the reduced ejection fraction, I used these numbers, I said that the heart filled with 100 milliliters, they pumped out only 35 milliliters, and that was a 35% ejection fraction. Well, if you are a patient with diastolic heart failure, you may also pump out 35 milliliters of blood, but if your heart only filled with, say, 53 milliliters of blood to start with, then in this case, your 35 milliliters, compared to the 53 milliliters that you started off with, will give you an ejection fraction of about 66%, which is normal, a preserved ejection fraction. But you see in both cases, you each only still pumped out 35 milliliters of blood with the contraction. So that's just a reminder that even though it is a heart failure with a preserved ejection fraction, it still most definitely is pathological and it is still congestive heart failure. So let's talk about some of the causes of diastolic heart failure or heart failure with a preserved ejection fraction. 
Coronary artery disease or ischemic heart disease can also cause diastolic heart failure. And long-standing hypertension can cause diastolic heart failure as well. Remember, I gave the example of the left ventricular hypertrophy or that big heart muscle that developed trying to pump against a high blood pressure. Well, in that case, if you do get a concentric hypertrophy or this really big muscle, then some of that muscle will crowd the chamber of the heart. In other words, that big muscle can take up some of the space that's needed to fill the heart properly. So this can lead to diastolic heart failure. Another cause of diastolic heart failure is a restrictive cardiomyopathy. If you have a pericardial disease, that can cause a problem. The pericardium is that sac that surrounds the heart. And so if for some reason there is disease in the pericardium or there is a tightening that doesn't allow the heart muscle to relax fully, then pericardial disease can lead to diastolic heart failure. Also, aortic stenosis and hypertrophic cardiomyopathy can lead to heart failure with preserved ejection fraction as well. If you found this overview on congestive heart failure to be helpful and informative, please be sure to like it and to share it with the people you care about. And if you have not done so already, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and hit that notification button. That way you'll be among the first to know when I'm releasing new medical content. Also, follow me on Instagram at Dr.Frida just to see what I'm up to in my everyday life. I thank you for watching. I appreciate you for watching. And please do your best to live your healthiest, happiest life. I'm Dr. Frida.